At its height by the turn of the 16th century, the Inca Empire stretched over 2,500 miles of western South America, from southwest Colombia to Santiago. From the capital of Cusco, in what is today southern Peru, the Inca emperors governed the lives of millions of subjects in the largest nation of the Americas at the time of Spanish conquest. The tasks of cataloging exchanges and disseminating commands required a technology that could encode such information across such a vast area. This technology would also need three important features to work effectively. The code must be consistent, precise, and permanent. These qualify writing. Hello! This episode in the Native American Writing Systems playlist brings us to South America, for two important scripts created among the ancient civilizations along the continent's west side. The most famous of these is the quipu, used for thousands of years in this area, yet known from especially Inca culture. The other is the tohapu, which used intricate and often colorful patterns to organize ideas. We will see examples of each in this episode. Kipu comes from the native Quechua word for knot, which the Inca themselves call these instruments. They were made to store data in a form that could literally fit in the palm of your hand, and two outstretched arms could hold the longest. Archaeological excavations at the Peruvian site of Caral date the earliest forms of Kipu to almost 5,000 years ago, and later civilizations such as the Wadi also employed the technology but it was the Inca that used it most extensively to record the activities and transactions that kept their empire running. Over a thousand quipu survive today, from mostly the ancient and colonial periods. Yet, into the present day, native peoples in a few remote corners of Peru preserve the tradition. Hanan Historia y Cultura provides more details on these cases, and I link to the video below. Studying how the quipu was made has helped to understand how it could encode information. Cotton is the primary material, spun into yarns that could be braided, knotted, and bound to a primary cord. The quipu could combine multiple features to specify the data. Colors, amounts, and positions, indeed even the spin of the yarn and the orientation of the knots themselves. I saw this beautifully preserved example and the next at the Dallas Museum of Art, and I linked to them in the description. Scholars have identified several common parts of a quipu. Like a thick spine binding the text together, a primary cord provides the base attaching all other components. The primary cord trails into an end string that may run even longer than the primary itself. Additional strings provide supplementary information that could be regionally specific. These accessory strings may also bear knots counting or summarizing the present cords. They are like the metadata for a document. And remember that kipu is the Quechua word for knot, the most basic and definitive feature in this writing system. Their main purpose is for counting, with the same decimal base used in the Quechua language. Representing the unit of one is the outermost position, counted by the number of its spins or knots. Working farther inward, along regular intervals, are the higher bases of ten, also counted by spins or knots at each level. These units continue inward to count tens, hundreds, thousands, and in some cases up to the tens of thousands. The next image will show sample amounts. Pendant cords are the strands holding the knots. They are usually directly attached to the primary cord, but it is also possible to find a few on looping cords running parallel to the former. This fascinating exemplar of the quipu as a counting tool is in the American Museum of Natural History in New York. Its display illustrates not only the totals from each of a group of pendant cords, but also their combined amount in a so-called summary cord, highlighted above. Each summary cord reflects the total from its respective section. If you are familiar with computer science, the summary cords recall pointers. The display counts the quipu from the four pendant cords in the first color-coded section. Cord 1. The unit knot has eight spins, followed by three knots for tens, counting 38. Chord two, three ones, seven tens, and two hundreds for 273. Chord three, eight ones, five tens, and two hundreds for 258. Chord four, nine ones, and eight tens for 89. If a position has no knots, it stands for zero. 
These four amounts add to 658. This same number appears in the summary chord above. Eight spins for the unit knot, five tens, and six hundreds. This summary chord therefore indexes the pendant chords belonging to the first of the color-coded sections. We don't know what this section was exactly counting, but we do know that it was definitely counting something. 